some of you guys asked for a uh, uh, a segment where we showed our, the tractors that we have, and um, we have 26 tractors. A friend of mine up at Sterling Farm had me write them all down one day because I didn't know how many we had. But each of our tractors is unique. They come from different places, and uh, they have each one has a little special thing that we've done to them to make them suitable for the tasks that we do, what we use them for. So I guess. I guess it's like restoration. Um, we like to restore things. A couple of the tractors were really, really ugly. Um, they had no paint on them except where there was grease. And under the grease, of course, was, was the paint. But uh, restoration is kind of, kind of a nice thing. Um, we as people, um, we need restored too. Um, God sent his son to restore us, um, to forgive our sins and so, Restoration kind of strikes a strikes a tone with all of us. You know, it's not just tractors. Some people restore trucks. Some people restore homes. There's a lot of different things you can restore, but restoration is kind of a special thing to me. Um, our house that we had, I'm standing in the in the uh, office of of the new home, um, burned um, October 31st, right, 2019. While we were doing chores in the morning. It was a, an old house, 100 years old. It was all brick, um, but there must have been some kind of electrical short or something that occurred. Unfortunately, where the fire started, there was also a gas line on the outside of the house where the regulator was, so as soon as it melted that off, it had plenty of fuel to, uh, to heat it up, so it was a total loss. Um, I had a, an extensive collection of farm toys. Um, my dad started me off with that back when I was about six years old with an 806. And uh, that was kind of a special tractor. Anyway, so I lost all those tractors. I don't know how many I had in that fire. Um, I went in that room about made me sick. They were all up on the shelves and they were black, just melted. Um, the fire didn't necessarily get to all the rooms. Some of them had extensive heat and smoke. But this is the tractor that started it all. My dad bought me this exact tractor when I was about six years old. And so, when we were replacing things that we lost in the fire, I started doing a little searching. And I actually found one of these. Um, this came from a place in Iowa. It is an actual, original 806 with the clamshell fenders and the whole nine yards. And we have a real, the real deal out there in the barn. Ben will talk about that when we're um, viewing the tractors. But this time, instead of trying to replace all those tractors I had, because I had total collections of uh, series. I thought this time, well, I'd just get a couple. And it started out that way, but it isn't long you got the bug, you know, when you start buying. My original intent was just to buy what we had on the farm that we farm with. So most of what you see up here is tractors that we do in fact farm with on the farm, but there's a few, a few additional ones also. But I was able to find them. Have to do a little looking. I had we went to a farm toy show here locally, the FFA guys have in Smithville, and we, we got some one year. And uh, we were able to find a lot of these, you know, various places online. And there's a few extra ones now. I've added more than what I had. Um, there's some special things over here that were toys that my dad had when he was a boy growing up. Um, there's a Farmall F12 up here, a Farmall regular. I don't know what this one is, if it's a Fordson. Um, there's a team of horses here and a McCormick Daring Wagon. Those toys are very, very old. This old M over here, um, let's see if I can get to it, in the corner here, that is an original M way back when my, when my dad was a boy. And uh, so those are kind of cool. Um, but anyway, Got a few collectibles. I guess that's why I had that door that way. It won't fit the other way. But when we built the house, we had them um, build these showcases for us. And uh, that's a place to keep them. Now they won't get dusty. The old ones got dusty. But anyway, we have a, a few of them. What we, what we farm with. I couldn't find a Klaus 840. I got a Klaus 900, so it's close. But uh, had a roll top desk in the old house, and believe it or not, that old roll top desk saved a lot of things in that fire. 
inside of it. The outside of the desk was gone, but underneath all those ashes and underneath this, there were some actually some photographs and things that were, were uh, preserved from the fire. There was actually a handgun in there too that uh, was salvageable. So, but anyway, that's just a little. Oh, and here's one more thing. This uh, weather vane here goes back to the farm where my dad grew up. My dad gave me that weather vane. That's very old. That hasn't been outside for a while. It's been in my dad's basement. And dad was uh, slowly giving me things, you know, transferring on to the next generation. So I'm out of on the back of this filing cabinet here. So, but that's a real pewter weather vane from early 1900s, I suppose. So I guess, well, from here we'll go to the actual tractors, the real deal. Here's a neat picture. I don't know if you guys see it or not, but that's down there at the main farm. And that's the red ones at that time. That was an early part of the collection. In a, that was a back circle before. There. Back before I did that, actually made Red Power Magazine. Any red guys out there? March of uh, hmm, can't remember what year that was. That was the cover picture. I sent it in to Red Power. I never dreamed it'd be on the cover, but it was on the cover of the magazine that year. But that's what I had at the time. I think there's about seven of them in that picture. But uh, the collection has grown since then. We have a few, quite a few more. Well, this afternoon we're going to do a little kind of equipment tour. I don't know how many videos it's going to take to get through all this stuff, but this is going to be the start. So I want to pass this off here to Dad. And um, Ben said that we had some uh, other people that were watching our videos that had older international tractors that they farm with, and there was some interest in what we had and. So I thought I'd tell you a little bit. There's a story with a lot of these. Um, this, I guess you would say, is our biggest tractor. It's a 3588. And uh, I bought this tractor from Walter Rice, a farmer west of Worcester here, not too far from here, about nine miles southwest of here. And he had two of these tractors. And um, they bought a Magnum tractor. And so they wanted to, to sell one. So they elected to sell this one. I bought this tractor. It had about 300 hours on a on a reman engine, a new engine. Uh, the torque had been gone through and uh, it had these these tires on, nice tires. It's a really nice shape. His son had painted it and uh, we did very little to it. Um, maybe touched up the rims a little bit. This has been a good tractor for us. Um, these tractors were kind of rare. A lot of people made fun of them. They looked very cumbersome and awkward, but I'll tell you what, this is probably one of the most nimble tractors you'll drive outside of a tricycle tractor because the front tire and the back tire track in the same exact track no matter which way you're going. This tractor will turn inside of the turning radius of our Magnum from with us, this tractor. You can turn this inside of that radius. It actually turns very tight. It's very nimble. Um, it's, it's a pretty powerful tractor. This tractor's turned up to about 200 horsepower. We pull a 496 uh, 18 foot disc with it and it handles that easily with no problem. When we first bought it, we didn't have duels on it and a tractor liked to pitch a little bit, so we put duels on now. They recommend not running duels on the front of this model. On the next size bigger one, then they recommend you could run duels all the way around, but we just have duels for the rear, and that helped a lot. Part of the reason it was pitching was the back tires would dig in when the disc pulled down and then it would hop. And when it put the duels on, the tractor runs level through the field now, so you don't have that hopping. The tractor runs, it rides pretty smooth because you have big tires. You guys out there with the four-wheel drive tractors probably know what I'm talking about, but the big tires, it rides smooth over chisel plowed or rough ground. And uh, it's just been a good tractor for us. We've had a knock on wood, very minimal maintenance that we've done to it. Um, we put some LED lights on it. Um, we retrofitted a Craftsman toolbox the other side so it has enough capacity for tools. And it came with this, this brush guard, this is kind of nice. Um, this front end is glass, so if you get around tree branches or something, it keeps from tearing the tractor up. But it's been a very nice tractor. So we're just gonna we're gonna do what's in this shed here. We got stuff spread out on three farms. So the next one we're standing next to is the smallest version that we have, and this is also the oldest one. This is a 1941 Farmall BN. This tractor belonged to Howard Masters. He was a friend of ours. Small farm east of here, about seven miles. Um, he bought this tractor a long time ago, and uh, they had a small farm. They did a little farming with it. When we bought it, the back tire, the one back tire was flat, and uh, we took an air tank with us, and we took a push pole. It wouldn't run, 
had a push pull hook to the front drug of the truck and I rode it steering. I think we aired it up three times on the way home, then we finally gave up. It was kind of a rough ride. But uh, the people we do tire business with, Winkler Tire and Sterling, he had a tire, a brand new tire up there, and he said he wanted to sell that, so he made us a deal on the tire. Um, this is the only tractor we have that has a magneto. Now there was an older mechanic at uh, Sterling Farms Worcester store, Ron, and he was uh, really good with magnetos, and I knew nothing about him, so he helped, he helped us figure out how to set that and get her running, and the thing runs good. Ben took it up to the school when he was up there at the Career Center Ag Mechanics. Did you do radiator? Was it radiator work we did on this that one? That was the A. It was but the I, a. I redid this one here. Okay. So I went through the head. The head, that's And everything. Right. It had what appeared to be newer valves in it. You could kind of tell by the stamping on the valve. You know, if you know anything about, you know, International Harvester, and farm and stuff like that there was different emblems and i don't know if i'm gonna be able to find one the but, old IH, but yeah. the old ih was kind of kind of more like rounded kind of almost looked like a little bit of a c on the side mm -hmm. like parentheses maybe and this is the newer newer emblem on here because this has been redecaled but the valves the intakes had the old style ih emblem on them and the new ones on the exhaust had the newer style so somebody had been in there previous to me um it everything checked out you know there was no scoring or anything in the cylinder walls and at the time it didn't burn any oil or anything i think now it's almost getting to the point it could probably get new valve guides and i did put new valve guides in that a when i had that up at the school but it the paint was terrible and we had to do some straightening the grill was kind of crushed but ben got this paint up at uh, summit racing so this is probably a little fancier paint than what it came with but it, it looks nice it has good luster to it um, we put a toolbox. Our tractors all have toolboxes. We made this little step over here. This is an old 656 step. Makes it easier to get on and off the tractor. This tractor does get used. Um, all of our tractors do. This one here I use uh, to bring the firewood in from the woods. I make a lot of firewood and this tractor fits through the woods on our little paths really nicely. And we've got a trailer we pull behind it to haul the wood. And being tricycle it's very nimble to get around in the woods with. So it's kind of nice to do. And it's probably one of the best starting tractors on the farm. This thing here will start when it's below zero. Just, just touch the starter and it really fires up nicely. So I guess the next closest thing we have here, we've got a 560 diesel over here. This tractor belonged to a fella, uh, Jeff Jacobs was his name. He was a mechanic at Ashland Implement, another case I used to deal west of here about 30 miles. I bought that tractor from him. He bought it from a farmer that had a 70 acre farm. Um, that's a fairly low hour tractor. Um, I used that tractor to pull this 10-foot John Deere drill right here in front of you for many, many years, and I hauled silage wagons with it. Um, the only thing I've really done to that tractor, we rebuilt the injector pump on it. And uh, Steering box last steering year. Steering box, yeah, we had steering box work done, the, the splines on the one gear strip. But other than that, it's been a very good tractor. Now, most people don't like that 282 engine because a glow plug engine, you have to hold that glow plug button down the way they were originally wired, by the time you got them hot, it zapped your batteries. It didn't have anything left. So Jeff wired that in parallel. That's a trick that you can do if you have one of these at home. You can put two 12-volt batteries wired in parallel. So you're not doubling your voltage. You're still at 12, but you have twice the cranking amps. So you can go ahead and juice those glow plugs and still have lots of ampage left to crank the motor. And it'll start really good. And that tractor does start very good. It's a strong running tractor. It, uh, I had a good friend in high school, his dad was a John Deere salesman. When we bought this drill, he asked me what I was gonna pull it with, and I told him he laughed, he didn't think he would do it, but he saw me down here on these hills pulling this drill with that 560, and it, it would pull it. It might scratch a little and smoke a little, but it would pull it. So, let's see if we can get through somewhere here. We got things kind of sandwiched in here for winter. We like our stuff inside. But unfortunately, sometimes it makes it a little hard to get around. I think I'm going to cheat. I'm going to go over the top. I'm going over the top. This tractor here is kind of a rare tractor. There aren't a lot of these around anymore. This is a, a Super MTA. It's gas. Um, this tractor came from Illinois. Or no, excuse me, Iowa. And uh, I put new rubber on it. And um, 
all the hydraulic power was plumbed through the power steering. And I wanted remotes, so the farm supply store we had at the time in the area here, he's no longer around, had a flow divider. That's what this little device is right here. So we run the oil through there, and it's got a high and a low output side. We've got the low output side plumbed to the steering, because it doesn't take a lot of capacity for the steering. The high output side goes back to the valves for the back. And that way you have hydraulics, rake hay with it, and some other things with it. Um, but this is also a nice tractor. And the torque is kind of nice. It's kind of a rare, and my dad loved it because it had power steering. My dad grew up, and the Farmall M was a big tractor when he was a kid. It was like a 100 horse tractor to us. So he was delighted when I got this tractor. He liked driving this one. But I did, and I did paint this one, put decals on it, so. And it has new rubber. Now it pulls wagons, powers a green auger, light duty, you know, not really heavy duty work. Behind here is one of my favorites. When I was six years old, I remember my dad bought me an 806. That probably what got me started with red tractors, and it looked just like that. It had seashell fenders, tricycle front end. Um, this one here is kind of neat. It's got an M&W turbo kit on it, which gives it a little more zip. And uh, we kind of like it. We put on the blower down here when we fill this silo. It's got an M&W muffler too, which is kind of a neat thing. It's quiet. They're really a whisper quiet. A lot of 806s have a pretty good bark to them, but this one is pretty quiet with that muffler. And of course, it got a big pre cleaner on it. We pull a 15 foot John Deere no till drill with this one. And tricycle tractors, they get around nicely. We like them for planting because at the end of the field, you can cut down on the amount of headland you need, shorten your turning radius. And uh, we have a lot of contour strips on these farms. And so agility is very important to us with our tractors. We don't have a lot of room to turn on some of these fields. We put new tires on this tractor. had bald tires when I got it. it. I used it on that 10 foot drill and it wouldn't even pull that when it was muddy. It was just pathetic. But uh, put new tires on it. And, this uh, also had 100 hours on an overhaul when we bought it. I yeah. I don't know if you mentioned that or not. No, I didn't. I forgot about that. And uh, we like to keep our fields clean. We pick up all of our rocks. Here's one of our rock boxes here. This is a planter tractor. So. We get the rocks cleaned up. You don't want to run those through your combine. The rocks are bad news. So we're pretty particular about keeping our fields cleaned up. But that's a little story about this one here. This tractor here, 806 tractor, I missed at an auction years before. When we're at the other farm, I'll show you the farm I am. I bought it. At that farm, they sold two M's and H in this tractor here. I didn't have enough money that day, but I did go home with the M. But I, was, I got feed one day, I was on the way home, and our, our, our neighbor up the road here, Rod Morrison, Morrison Farms, they deal in used equipment. I saw this tractor sitting there on a truck, and I thought, that sure looks like that tractor that got sold that time. And I pulled in there, and sure enough, it was. And so I bought it. It cost more than it did the first time that it was sold. But uh, this is just a straight 806. Um, I forgot to tell you, that other 806 was changed over to the H pattern pedestal shifter. That's kind of nice. It's got the newer style shifter on it. This is still the inline shifter. It doesn't shift bad. Some people have lots of complaints about them, but this tractor shifts pretty nice. It's got the inline shifter. And uh, I've made a few sets of fenders. It's got a, one set of fenders there on the front. It keeps the, the slop off the tractor. But this tractor here does a lot of blowing. It's our main blower tractor. We got 600 international blowers. And uh, the PTO, UIH guys probably know this, but the PTOs on these 806s runs a little closer to uh, 600, uh, 650 RPM than it does 540. So you can really send a silage up the pipe in a hurry with these. That's why a lot of these tractors were used for PTO work, whether it be a 4-H harvester or a blower. But uh, that's where ours spends a lot of time. And then we got, this is one of the new idea snow blowers. This is the first one we bought. This is a little one. This is a seven footer. And this tractor handles it real nice. You just have to pick your wind direction so you don't get turned into a sugar cookie because you can get painted with snow in a hurry if the wind shifts on you. But it handles that blower really nicely. Over here we have a couple more. Yeah. This is the 484 came from a farm down by Zanesville, Ohio. That's strip mine country. The tires that were on the back of this thing looked like you took a hatchet and you chopped at them. And my dad said it was because of all the shale they have in the ground down there. 
when you spin a tractor down there in that county, it, you'll, it cuts your tires. And so that's one of the things we did is we put new tires on. Now this tractor, the only paint on this tractor was where there was grease. I'm not kidding you. My, my wife thought it had leprosy when I got it. And it, it came with a loader. We still have the loader. We put the loader and we have a three-point backhoe we put on the spring for tile repair. Um, but this is also a good tractor. It mostly is used for, like I said, tile repair and it spends a lot of time on the tether in the summer. We have a six-rotor floss tether and it handles that very nicely. Very fuel efficient tractor. This is a, a wood chipper that we have here for, this is another fun piece. We might get a demonstrate for you this winter yet. Um, it made brush cutting fun. Um, we used to have to pile brush and go back and burn brush and it was just a hassle. Now, when we go on the job, it's a one and done. You pull it up the chainsaw on the truck and the chipper and you, you trim the trees, you run them through the chipper, it comes out the back, it's shredded to nothing. And if you're along a fence row, you blow it in the fence row. If you're out in the field, you just blow it out in the field and it mixes in the soil. It's just, just nice to be to be all done when you leave. And we've done some some work for some neighbors. Storm damage helped them clean up and over at my parents' place. It's just a, a handy way to handle brush. You can take a barn-sized pile of brush and put it in a pickup truck. It's just it's amazing how it reduces the, uh, the volume. And this Wood Max brand right here, that's a good one. It has a flywheel in there. It's 250 200 pounds, pounds, I think. 250 pound flywheel. Yeah. And you know, if you're familiar with the balers and some of the other implements in the farm equipment industry, um, your flywheel maintains your momentum so you can continue feeding the machine. This chipper has a flywheel, and they say you can run this with 20 horse utility or a compact tractor. We've got 40 on there. If you feed a big log in there, you're glad you have 40 because it will make it snort a little. But these cheap chippers that have belt drive, and they wouldn't hold a candle to that. That has uh, power feed, feed rolls like an actual forage harvester, it's reversible, and that's just a wonderful machine. If you want a wood chipper that'll do the job, that's the one you want. This is a nice sized tractor, very fuel efficient. It has the, uh, the swept back front axle, if you're an IH guy, you understand that. The swept back front axle, we have a tractor at the other farm with spree, but that's important. That cuts down your turning radius. That changes the position of this axle. This, this axle almost a foot when you have the swept back axle. That makes it very agile for loader work or scraping. Um, this gets around really nice. We really like this tractor. We did a lot of use. This is the first tractor I bought right after my wife and I got married. My father-in-law had all olivers and whites. And uh, well, he knew I liked red tractors. And we went to a sailor too. And, we hadn't come up with anything, and right after we got married, we went up to Bowling Green and bought this tractor. It had a cab on it, and I didn't want the cab, so the guy took the cab off and put fenders on it. That heat hauser isn't necessarily the right one for it, but believe me, when it's cold, you appreciate the windbreaker. But uh, I used to plow with a five-bottom plow with this a lot. Um, we don't plow anymore, we chisel plow. We have a five shank you can pull with this. Um, it does a lot of finish work in the spring pulling either a finisher or a quality mulcher, working ground. And now that we do some ag bags, this, we, we learned that the 806 isn't quite enough zip to run an ag bagger. You gotta have closer to 140 horse, and this has turned to 145, so it handles the ag bagger really nicely. And uh, so this is the tractor I personally own the longest, but it came from Bowling Green. The owner's name I don't know, I bought it my father-in-law actually, he went to a sale with me. We were bidding on a 1066, we didn't get it, we got outbid. And the gentleman came to me and said he had one for sale and that's how I got in contact with him. But it came from Northwest Ohio. This little tractor here has a story. Um, there's a gentleman, Paul Overmiller, that I knew in a church growing up as a kid. His dad bought that tractor new in 1954. He bought the tractor and over here in the corner we have some implements for it. It's got a a one bottom plow, a front mounted snow blade, a sickle bar mower, and cultivators. And, it, and there was a little John Deere brush hog I got with the deal too. Bought it as a unit all together. He wanted to keep it together. Uh, my cousin worked for Paul. Paul had an, an oil producing company. And my cousin found out that he wanted to sell it. He said that uh, he thought that I'd be a good home for it. So I took Ben up there with me that day 
And he couldn't have been much more than six or seven years old. Pretty young yet. If that. And Paul and I, I remember it was a snowy day, it was in December, we were standing there in the driveway, he had the tractor running there. Or maybe he had shut it off, I don't remember. We were standing there talking and Ben goes over there and I still remember he had this little white snowsuit on and a little black hat with earmuffs. He walks over there and I watched him get on this tractor. And believe it or not, he got on here himself. Now this was more I put on here later. But he put one foot in that wheel weight right there and he continued to proceed to climb up on top of this tractor. And he looked at me and he said, Daddy, I want that tractor. And Paul says, he says, uh, I believe you better buy that. And so I did. And uh, I'm glad I did. It gets used, well this woods mower is nice for mowing around the farm here. We've got some, some grass strips at the end of the fields and stuff. And this is just a nice way to mow. Um, my dad used a time or two to plow garden with the one bottom plow back when he he had more garden, but um, another nice run tractor. Same exact engine that's in that BN. Um, ben had it up at the school. Did radiator work on this one, I believe. Radiator, valve guides. Um, I did pull the pistons and everything out through the bottom. You know, drop the pan, check for bearing wear and stuff like that, rings, and it was in good shape. So put new valve guides in and put it back together and she's been running ever since just fine. Mm -hmm. Another very nice tractor, very tight tractor and the rubber, it has good rubber, that tractor came with good rubber on it. That little trailer over there in the corner is the one we pulled with the VN to bring the wood in from the woods. But uh, you can get about three fourths of a cord on there if you rank it in tight. Here's an old piece here. This is an international 100 balanced head mower. We use that to, uh, to mow road ditches with and pasture. If we get some scrubby thistles and stuff growing, we use that for that. But that mower goes back to my father in law. They used to mow hay with that back in the 60s before the hay bind. And over here, there's an International 56 blower. That came from Paul Snare. We'll see his tractor we bought from him later. That also didn't have any paint on it, but uh, we use that little blower down in the 60 foot silo. And, uh, it's, it's enough blower for a small silo. It works pretty nice. So I guess that's everything we have here. We'll have to relocate to another place to get you more tractor footage. Okay. Here we have a 1466. Um, this is one of the first tractors that we bought, my father-in-law and I together. Um, I guess it was actually the second international tractor that we bought together in the partnership. This tractor came from Ashland. I don't remember the name of the people that had it, but uh, this was a big tractor there. They had repainted it. The paint is really nice on it. Um, the back tires weren't very good. Um, when I bought the other half of the partnership, they were bald, so we put these new Firestones on there. Um, this tractor here, we chop with. We used to have a, a Gale chopper. Now we have a New Holland FP230 chopper. Very nice match for this tractor. Um, it's, not, it's fun. I like chopping hay with that, and uh, it's just a, a nice, nice, nice horsepower match for that machine. It's got the high RPM pump on it, so that yeah. That helps. And I did have to put a new engine in here. Yeah, it has a remanufactured engine, so it doesn't have a whole lot of hours. John Winkler has done some work for us. John and I put a new compressor lines and and stuff on here for the air conditioning. I will say this is the best air conditioner we have. You can see your breath in there in the summer on a 90 degree day. And I think you can almost keep meat in that cab. That cab gets really cold. And my dad put a new floor in the cab. The flooring is really nice. This tractor does have a hydraulic seat. Um, I think it's the only one we have that have a hydraulic seat. Or no, 3588 has, has hydraulic seat too. But um, a very nice tractor. Um, this tractor used to pull the 496 disc until we got the 3588. And we have a seven chain chisel plow we used to pull with this, and now we pull that with a magnum. And uh, we have a bigger new idea blower here. This one still has a lot of snow on it. This is the eight footer here. The seven footer wasn't wide enough to cover the wheel, so we, I looked some more and found an eight footer. And you'll notice the top of the blower is tapered. This in here will eat a four foot drift. And it's gotten a lot of use this winter. And a uh, wonderful machine, does a wonderful job. It has a cutting edge on the bottom. It does a much better job than it used to have. And then uh, 
to Ben's right, right there is our combine. We have a 1644. We bought that new in 1994. Um, I was also surprised when we bought that. We had a white combine before. You might want to walk over here. The and, mic. Uh, we were so looking good. for combines. And the market for combines. My father-in-law, he had his heart set. He wanted a John Deere. I'm not big on John Deere stuff. Sorry, John Deere guys. But uh, I wanted a red combine. We found this machine. This was a deal. Um, the new series machine, the 2100, the 2100 series machines were coming out. They were trying to move the last of the the 44s and 88s, and so we got a pretty good price on this machine. Excuse me, machine. We have a six row head for it, a 15 foot grain platform that you saw last fall when we were doing our B videos. But a very nice machine. Um, we had trouble picking up the corn head. Um, it was really slow. You had to have it revved way up, and we added an auxiliary, put a third hydraulic cylinder on that, and boy, that made a difference. You can almost pick it up at an idle now. But it's been a very good machine, very trouble-free machine, knock on wood. We've done a few little things like the hydraulic update, and there might be a few other things we've done to it. We put stalk stompers on our corn head, smash the stalks down, that helps preserve your tires, and gets those stalks closer to the ground where they can start to decompose. That's one thing we did do. And uh, I guess we put a poly kit on the bottom of our bean head, which helps make it glide across the ground nicer, doesn't push dirt like it used to. But uh, this has been a nice machine. There's that panel up there that I lost somewhere in the corner last fall that we need to find this spring. It's out there somewhere. You know, when the glacier melts? When the glacier melts, we'll find it. It'll show up. But it's a very nice machine. Low hour machine. I don't remember exactly where we're at on the horse. Oh. I can't remember if it's... it's I think it's still 2,000 some odd hours. Yeah, we're slightly over 2,000 hours. We clean it up every summer, we blow it off good, wash it, we wax it if we have time, but uh, it's been a very good machine for us. We like the job it does. It's not a real heavy machine. Um, we can go when the ground's kind of wet. It doesn't track the field too bad. So we'll go on to something else. Sorry, I walked right by one. This is probably one of my favorite tractors here. This is that Farmal M I bought at that sale that I mentioned where the 806 was sold. I didn't have the money for the 806 at the time, but I got this tractor here. Um, I've used this tractor a lot. We make a lot of small square bales for many, many years. We kicked bales in wagons and pulled them in and unloaded them, and I used this tractor to do that. And uh, put new tires on this tractor. A little bit of cosmetic paint. I didn't do a lot of painting on this tractor, just some small rims and things like that. It was well painted when I bought it. It's been a good tractor, dependable tractor. I keep uh, forgetting, but for any of you guys that are true red fans, yeah, you'll like our pre. I'll let you take a peek in that pre cleaner and see what uh, what got sucked in. And what uh, the red one sucked up. I got I got that idea from a Red Power Roundup or somewhere that I was. I saw somebody had a little John Deere tractor in a pre cleaner, so I soon tried to find all the pre cleaners I could to outfit my tractors just so I could have a John Deere tractor in it. So even the little the BN and the Super A also have little creek cleaners on them, cute little jars on them, so. Yep. Try to tweak them up a little bit. This one does have a belt pulley. I forgot to say, down at the other farm, I've got a buzz saw, and I do have a, a belt driven buzz saw and a, and a belt, so I've had a little time, a little chance to run some belt equipment with it, um, just for the nostalgia of it, I guess. We had an old corn crib, we tore it down and saw it up with it. I guess that's basically what I bought it for, was to chop that old thing up, but. That's kind of fun.